Hey everybody, in this video I just want to go over quickly how to set up a bootstrap modal in your application. As with uh, all my videos lately, I'm starting off with Laravel Jetstream. And of course every project is going to be different, so you may not be using Jetstream uh, for your uh, in your work or for your project, and that's fine. Uh, to me, it's just a, a kind of a nice way to start. Um, I'm used to Vue, so we'll be using Vue 3. And uh, the latest bootstrap as of the time of this recording, it's five points something or other. Um, but I use modals a lot and I've come across modals a lot in other people's designs. So this is kind of something worth knowing. It's very easy to do. We're going to do it start from finish, uh, start to finish. Uh, so I'll just show you how we get started here. I've got um, Vagrant uh, running here with Laravel Homestead, uh, just in case you're curious use sublime here drag this over uh, so what i'll do is just set up a new page now in this particular uh, installation i'm using um the uh I, I authenticate it like i signed in before setting up a page and whatnot so i'll just set up a new route that isn't covered by this uh, demo app here um, and we'll work with that page. I'm just going to show bare bones implementation. So go to our routes. Uh, let's see, I'll set up a new one for, um, let's see, modal demo. And I'll just use my page controller. Uh, this is kind of a catch all for odds and ends, uh, different pages that I set up. I use a page controller uh, just to keep things simple. Uh, and I'll set up um, a modal demo route I think this has to be oops, an underscore okay so hopefully you can see that uh, it's just a simple route because I want to just serve up a new um, a new page uh, to demo uh, demonstrate this modal and actually I don't even have to set it up in the page controller but whatever you're probably working with the same rather than doing it in line that is uh, so modal demos is that what I called this yeah uh, I don't need the request object or anything uh, return inertia so with uh, jetpack you get inertia option or live wire um, I, I kind of like inertia it reminds me of uh, what was it called um, turbo links which is done put out by the people at Basecamp, and I liked to it was kind of a cool way of updating a page. Uh, yeah, and what it would do is it'd bring the HTML in, and it would replace everything but the head, if I remember correctly, in the HTML. It was a way to make your app look like it was it wasn't refreshing it because it wasn't refreshing the page the way an old style app would do, but it looked um, like a, a single page application, but it wasn't quite. So it was kind of cool. And inertia reminds me of that. And I like it. You know, I prefer to keep things a lot more simple, uh, use a lot less JavaScript and whatnot. But honestly, sometimes you just have to use the modern tools if they work well. And inertia seems to me to work really well. I haven't really run into anything well, with the exception of a couple of things that um, make me not want to use it, so that's fine. But really, uh, in general, I like where I work. I like working with bare bones kind of stuff, but um, this this works for me as well. All right, so render, and I'll just call this modal demo. And what inertia will do is it'll look for um, a file. Like here, you'll see on this route, I'm serving up dashboard, and what that looks for is the dashboard.view file in the pages directory. So I don't know if you can see that at the top of my code editor here, but it's in resources, JS, pages, dashboard, dot view. So I will create a new file for a modal demo here. And I don't need to send any data to this because I really just want to show how to invoke uh, a modal, a bootstrap modal. So new page, uh, sorry, new file. I'm going to send that to resources, JS, pages, and I'll call this modal demo.view. Now I'm going to steal a bit of boilerplate from, uh, from my dashboard file because I can never remember how to do this from scratch. So I set up my script, 
uh, setup. I need the layout. Uh, I do need, I don't think I'm using any of this from inertia, but we'll leave it uh, reactive and on mounted. That works just fine. And what do I need? I need a template here. Okay, so template tags. I'm, I'm still fairly new to view three, so um, I'm used to view two. So every once in a while, I'll type this dot, whatever. And I'm trying to get used to the composition API, which is different than um, than what I'm used to from view two, but that's fine. App layout, that's what I need. So we'll call this. What else do I need here just to make it look half decent? Oh, that's fine for now. Um, and we'll call this modal demo. So uh, what we first uh, need to do is take a look at the bootstrap documentation. Hopefully this is big enough here. I will go to the docs. I'll look up modal on here on the left. And I don't want to, uh, like all the demo demonstrations here, they'll show like a button that you can press, like for example here, right? Launch demo modal. And uh, the code here uses um just puts a de uh, a button in the in the html the template there to to open it up but i i want to be able to open and close using the javascript in my view script because um well i just want more control over when it's opened and closed so uh, i won't be copying this button portion but i will copy this modal portion right here and i will put that i generally put that down at the bottom of whatever whatever I'm building, right? Just to keep them all in one place. Now at this top part, I'll just do a simple row. Um, I'll make the background. This is gonna be ugly, but uh, it's just to get something on the page. Test. So and now I wanna test if, uh, if the route actually works. So I'll go up to my top here. And I generally keep my um, inspection window open so I can see any uh, errors. What is my route? I forget. Need my web routes. Modal demo, dash demo. There we go. So am I serving up a page? No, unexpected token. Uh, what did I forget? Semicolon. <clears throat> Cannot find the module modal demo view. Why is that? Did I name it incorrectly? Modal demo. The name looks correct. It's in JS pages. It's in the dashboard. Now, what is the problem here? Oh, that's why I'm not running Webpack hmm. or Laravel Mix. Always compile your code. There we go. Now it should work. Okay, good. So I've got a little test right here. That's what I what I typed out. So this will just be really ugly and dirty. Now, uh, if I wanted to just copy the demo here from the Bootstrap um, docs, refresh that. I've got my button here, and it works. Right, launches the modal. But what I want to be able to do is open this using JavaScript. So if you go to the documentation at the bottom, you can see how uh, we are to uh, create a new modal. Let me just find the right thing here. There we go. Passing options down here at the bottom. You use uh, the Bootstrap Global to hook into the ID of the modal. And uh, from there, you can open it. You can call hide and show and some other things. Uh, you can also add event listeners to do something when it is shown or when it is hidden. So the way I wire this up is I use the on mounted um, lifecycle hook, which I believe is a, it takes a closure. Uh, yes, it does. And this is where I want to grab my modal. Now I also need to create that no create that in the state. So I use um, views reactive function right here and I usually name them like modal underscore and what it's all about so I say it's a it's the demo and um, 
that's it. <laughs> and I set that to null. So I'll call it modal demo. And in my onmounted hook, I want to um, say what that is. So it's state. So you have my constant right here for state uh, dot modal demo. And what is it going to equal? It's going to equal this right here, new bootstrap dot modal. And I need the ID. So this example is probably also using uh, my modal. No, it's not. Let's see the ID down here. And I, I generally uh, name it the same as the property on the state just to keep things straight in my head. Uh, let's see, the ID is example modal, but I'll call this modal underscore demo. And uh, for the label, the aria label, I just added a label to the end there. Oops, uh, modal demo label. And I also want to create a function so I can test uh, opening this. So function open modal. And this will be state modal underscore demo uh, show is the method. <clears throat> and now I need to put something in the in the uh, template that allows me to call that open modal function. So instead of the button here, launch demo modal, I'm going to take out the, the data attributes here. Bootstrap uses. First, let me make sure that uh, I can no longer open the modal this way. Oh, let's see, cannot read properties undefined class list. So that means <clears throat> I've learned that this means that I wasn't able to find the modal in my um, my on mounted. And I think that's because I have to explicitly use window dot bootstrap. Oh no, that wouldn't be the case. Um, I have to find modal demo. There, I had to change the uh, the ID I was looking for. And if memory serves, this wasn't working for me before in view. I had to use um, document dot get element by ID, but let's try this and see if it works. Okay, I don't get an error anyway. Now clicking this button, the modal doesn't open and that's because um, uh, there's no click handler here. There's no, uh, I, I removed bootstraps own um, data attributes, so it just won't work. So let's try this. Click open modal. Let's see if this actually works. And it does. There we go. So now that is view, uh, just using JavaScript to open up the modal rather than uh, Bootstrap's baked in controls. And again, I'm doing this because I want more control over when I show and, and hide the modal. So I'll do another one for close modal which would be state modal demo uh, hide. And let's set up another button. Close the modal. And I should be able to close it now. So refresh, I've got two buttons now. Get a little bit of, a little bit of space in there so it's easier to see. Um, margin bottom five. Why didn't that work? Refresh too quickly. There we go. So I launch it. Oh, I can't really click that, can I? Haha. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Let's see. Uh, close. Okay, I'll take away this here just to prove that it works. Uh, data B. Yes, that's funny. Bootstrap dismiss equals modal. I want to close now, by the way, that could close a lot of different modals, right? Sometimes I want to uh, unclick close modal first. Let me prove that this does nothing if I don't have it wired up. So there's no click handler here. If I close it, yeah, nothing happens. But now I will call my own close modal function and it should work. Open and close. Perfect. So, I mean, when is this useful, um, being able to open and close the modal on my own? Well, in other videos I've shown where, you know, if you want to delete something, you want to show a, a modal to confirm, hey, do you in fact want to delete this? So that's uh, a workflow. You may need to be doing some things before you open the modal. Um, so for example, I'll show you in the dashboard stuff that I was doing. Delete uh, task init. So I need to set in this case, well, which which thing, which task in this case am I deleting? So I want to set that property. 
and then I show the modal to confirm. And when uh, the deletion is confirmed, well, then I go through with the actual deletion. And when it's done, that's when I hide the modal again. Being able to do it programmatically like this, you'll find is probably the, the most common use case. Um, it's pretty rare when you'll be fine with just the, the buttons that Bootstrap provides right up here, right? Your workflow is likely going to be a little more complicated than that for your users. So I'll put this on GitHub. Uh, I'll put all the explanation of how to get it in the description here, just so you can look at this bare bones example. And it's a good idea to get very used to setting up these modals and um, organizing them well, because a busy page, when you've got a lot of stuff going on for your users, you can have quite a few uh, modals. I've had pages where there were six or more different modals for different things. And it can get confusing. So it's a good idea to come up with your own like naming conventions, you know, modal underscore something, just so you can keep them organized in the template itself. Maybe move them all the way down to the bottom so it's easy to find stuff. Uh, you can use view to create reusable components where you know the modals all kind of look the same on, on in the header and the footer, but in the middle, that's you use uh, view slots to put new new content in there. And if if Whatever I'm saying right now doesn't make any sense to you. Please make a put a comment down below, and I can uh, get into more detail on that later on. But um, as I was saying, getting used to using these modals, it's it's good. You'll save a lot of time um, by getting comfortable with this. Because uh, I remember early on in my career, I would goof around with this stuff all the time until I finally arrived at kind of a workflow that worked for me and uh, made it quicker to develop with. So that's it. Thanks for watching. If you do have any questions, put them down below. And until the next video, cheers.